the Barrier Native Truth is part of our history. It's like a friend. It's been in your life, all your life. The paper and the town are very connected and intertwined. We were born together, we've grown up together, we've been through everything together. You have a huge number of people within a particular age group in the city. That's their morning fix to go and pick the paper up out of the garden, sit down and read your paper and be happy. The realisation for me that the paper was in real trouble of just collapsing was when COVID hit. Some of the restrictions started coming in about larger groups. No one's advertising, all the businesses are shutting down and there's no money coming in to get the paper out. It came as a big shock to me that the paper was in trouble. I honestly did not see it coming. And I know there's lots and lots of little country towns that don't get that information, but I felt as if... But we've had it since we were born. We've had it forever, yeah. yes. There was definitely a lot of questions, like, is it ever coming back? It was not a nice feeling to know that an institution like the Barry Daily Truth would cease to exist for even just a little while. And we should all be trying to do the best we possibly can to save it. Broken Hill's best known as a mining town, but it's a lot more than that. It's very close-knit. It's very isolated. I think that it's 500 kilometres to the closest capital city is what makes us feel close, I guess. I like being from Broken Hill. I think it's helped shape who I am. It's that sense of community and belonging to a place that's so special. I've seen the town of Broken Hill change dramatically in the last 20 years. Who would have thought 20, 30 years ago you'd have the Broken Hill Festival and you know, drag queens take over the town that weekend and they're just part of the community. It's a celebration of the adventures of Priscilla, Queen of the Desert, which was majorly shot here in Broken Hill. All right, so obviously the Broken Hill Festival looks a bit different this year. Uh, yes. What does the unplugged version involve? We're trying to find a way to make sure that we can still give the, the glitter and the camp celebration of Priscilla that we love and we expect every year, just in the COVID-friendly way, I guess. <laughs> of course, we couldn't have uh, Broken Hill Unplugged without a fabulous queen. I love my job, yes. I'm very close to the end of my cadetship. I would love to continue being a journalist. I like that aspect of talking to people and hearing them sharing their stories. But I also like taking photos. It's a different way to tell the story with a visual aspect. Yeah, I'm kind of hoping for a miracle, just believing that something's gonna happen that's gonna keep the BDT going, because it'd be a really sad day if it didn't and had to close. My name is Gavin Schmidt and I am the general manager. I joined the paper in 1976 and within a week I reckon I thought, yeah, this is it, I like this. And it was, uh, it was good camaraderie, interaction. How you going, mate? Good, good. Make sure you want to go in and get some photos. Yeah, it's going to be all right, isn't it, to go up each end? Yeah, yeah. And... Originally I started off in the printing section and then in 1988 I moved to photographer. More recently, in the last six months, I've become the general manager. Always aspire to run the place, but uh, lately with the COVID and everything that's gone on, I quite often sit there thinking, geez, I wish I was still just, just a photographer. I suppose it's a bit of therapy for me, mentally as well. 
yeah, it's just been a lot of stress, a lot of different things going on, and yeah. Gavin is really the person who's been carrying the newspaper throughout this current crisis. And he's the kind of guy that sort of cares what happens to the star. It's just not like we're a business, these are numbers. We've all worked together for a lot of years and we all socialise together a fair bit. You know, it's like a little family. Pull your chairs in. So first of all, great paper Saturday. There's some ripper yarns in there. The Truth used to be a six days a week newspaper. At the moment, we're just scraping in, printing two papers a week, and that's with JobKeeper. Obviously, that's going to run out in March. Emily, what are you up to? So the local garden club uh, could be folding. With All right, yeah, I mean, that's important for Broken Hill, especially. It's the role of the newspaper to give a voice to ordinary people of Broken Hill in the far west, you know, the average chap in the street. Great. Yes. What are you, what are you up to? Uh, Silver Lee. Silver Lee looks after disabled kids from birth to six or eight years old. Yeah and they could be out of business by the middle of next year. Yeah, yeah, that's so good. If that goes, then you live in Broken Hill, you're gonna to have to go to Mildura or Adelaide. Mm. In other words, you gotta leave town. We believe we don't get heard enough in the political areas, federal or state. We're forgotten out here over the other side of the Blue Mountains. So we like to get the local side of everything that's impacting. Definitely in the last seven years, it's been more challenging every year. The digital disruption of newspapers has had a huge impact on the truth, as well as other newspapers. There's been less ads going into the paper over the years, which means more space to fill. The number of staff that I've had has, has been dwindling as well, so it's been uh, a challenge just to get the paper out, basically. Oh, good. Yeah. Want to go through them rugby tickets? Yeah, that'd be great. What have you got? Let's have a look. We were always trying to get new ideas of creating revenue and we knew it was, you know, it's a tough gig, but I, I think we would have been okay until the COVID situation hit. Early March, it just started drop off very quickly, the advertising. I knew that we were heading in a bad direction and that, the, you know, the government would just increase restrictions and that would hit our main advertisers, which was clubs, pubs. And that was really difficult in terms of, um, it was really stressful as well. And you, you could see it coming, you know, coming, it's gonna knock you out. I reckon we, was, we were losing nearly $10,000 a day just putting the paper out. And I was really worried. Yeah, I just thought, well, I have to let everyone know. sent out a text message to everyone that we were having a staff meeting. The night before was pretty intense, just not sleeping, you know, and knowing that I had to put this to the people, it's their livelihoods, their jobs, their families. Something a bit more dry. We went out to the back paper shed so everyone could fit in. He's not always a very serious person, Gavin, but as soon as he walked in, he just, he didn't look like himself. Poor bugger, he looked, he looked very stressed. Gavin was quite frank about the position the paper was in. We've got two choices. He basically said that we could either keep going and run ourselves into the ground or we could shut up shop and pause, basically, um, close for as long as necessary and hopefully one day reopen the paper. And people voted on the second option, which was to stop immediately and give ourselves a fighting chance of um, keeping the paper alive in the town. To be the man that was leading the paper into shutdown uh, was, was not a good feeling. It felt weird, strange, upsetting. Because no one had been around for over 100 years. It's always been there. It's part of Broken Hills heritage. Well, this is where it all started. This is where the first pioneers discovered silver and lead. And that was in 1876. And down there, life wasn't really very much fun. Broken Hill was basically discovered just by accident. 
It was one of the greatest discoveries of silver, lead and zinc ever seen. There was a group of men that became partners. They formed the company called BHP, Broken Hill Proprietary. And for many years, it was the mine. And from there, men came, flocked to Broken Hill. And from a dingy mining tinny town, it grew to the city that it is. It was a real struggle early on in Broken Hill. In the first 20 years, you know, about 200 people were killed in the mines. The mine whistle would go when there was a mine fatality. And every time the people of this city heard that whistle, for a few seconds, you didn't know whether it was your father or your brother. Down there, the conditions were absolutely appalling. Many of the miners suffered from dusting of the lungs and emphysema, and many of the miners died of it. And it was down there that trade unionism started in Broken Hill. The barrier truth began in Broken Hill in the late 1890s, just as a weekly. It was put out by unionists to promote their cause. They were absolutely desperate in their attempt to improve working conditions. And then finally, it was actually owned by uh, the union movement. A lot of history up here, Mick. This building was built in 1905, so they built it specifically for the newspaper. Just watch your step there, Mike. Beautiful. In 1907, BHP had a fantastic year, made train loads of money. And then the following year, the metal prices dropped and they wanted the workers to take a pay cut, so there was a lot of tension. So this is where it was all put together until about 1972. OK, fantastic. The decision was made at the newspaper, which you know, it was a union-owned newspaper, to go to a daily in 1908. That's Hawkey. Yeah, there we go. Bob Hawke. Yeah. To become a daily, they were feeding the union causes into the very homes of all their miners. Not just the miners, their wives. So to see this in black and white, all the things that these terrible mine owners were going to do, was just created that tension and kept that turmoil going. And of course, it, it, it helped develop the, uh, the paper into a great daily. About two months later, one of the big strikes in Broken Hill happened, the 1909 lockout, which was devastating on the community. Workers were locked out because they wouldn't accept the pay cut. So the economy sank into a big depression. The result of the lockout strike, really, no one won on that one. What came out of that was a people's determination to stick together and just keep trying. The BHP closed in 1939, so that put a very nasty taste in Broken Hill people's minds. But other companies kept going and, and mining continued in Broken Hill and was an important part of the city's economy. Broken Hill lies with the Barrier Industrial Council. The Trades Hall is as opulent as it is mighty. The unions run everything here. To work in Broken Hill, you had to be in a union. The BIC owns its own newspaper, the Barrier Daily Truth. Very handy to have a mouthpiece. It was a very powerful newspaper. It basically told you the unions were saying, this is how you're going to live, this is what was happening in the city, uh, you obey or you're in big trouble. Tell me, do you carry any criticism in your columns at all of union activity in Broken Hill? Well, uh, editorially, naturally, we don't bite the hand that feeds us. One of the uh, compulsory components of being a, a unionist was that you contributed to the upkeep of the Barry Daily Truth. So that was automatically taken out of your pay. So all uh, BIC unionists, I believe, must subscribe to your newspaper. Well, the decision to subscribe was a democratic decision uh, our mass meetings here. If you had a household with two or three brothers and a father that were union members, all three of them would have to subscribe to the newspaper and all three of them would get three papers delivered over their, over their front fence. It's ridiculous, really, isn't it? But uh, I would probably like to see that happening now. Imagine all the subscriptions we'd have. The paper is still owned by the BIC. 
The Barry Industrial Council is, you know, amalgam of, of unions in Broken Hill, which is kind of like the, like the ACTU of Broken Hill. Although the union owns it, it's really community run, community owned. The BIC has no editorial control over the newspaper. It's a totally independent business entity. Since COVID hit in March, we've had to focus more on how the unions can assist the paper. I've been assisted through that process by my sister, Diana. I've got a copy of the document that we were working on in the Zoom meeting. It's a strategic plan. Our father was a newspaper delivery man and he was also junior vice president of the Barrier Industrial Council. So we've had a long association with the Barrier Daily Truth and um, I guess it's genetically ingrained. Um, you've mentioned that there are some ways that we can get business involved. This certainly is a make or break time for the newspaper and that has been weighing heavily on our minds. We accept that the newspaper has to change. Um, it's changing technology, changing media landscape. When the newspaper decided about suspending the publication, I, I wrote the story, so I did have a sense of history. I framed the story too that, you know, this isn't the end, we're just hitting the pause button. Hello, hello. It's it's hello. 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 Hello, Chris Day. You're there and you're scoring. Oh, okay. Well, okay. Every Wednesday, I meet with a group of my friends. Oh, my God. This is pathetic. I mean, we eat and we drink and we play Scrabble and we chat. I hope you spelled cartel. C-A-R-T-E-L. When there was an announcement that the paper would close. I remember we talked a lot about it at Scrabble. Everybody just thought, oh, calamity. I think well, we first, a... first was shock. All of a sudden, you, went you weren't getting the local paper. There was low local news. And but I actually uh... felt as if my right arm had been cut off. You... Yeah. How on earth do you find out about anything? Well, the only good thing in our family. Young um, people could survive on social media, but our age group couldn't. No. I reckon 65 to 70 per cent of our Customers are, are pensioners, retired people. And, and I think the paper is the link between us, mm. our age group, and the rest of the community. And suddenly that link wasn't there, so yeah. there was no inclusiveness. You know, we were just sort of stranded. There was all these questions. Well, how will we know if we have to go to a funeral? And how will we know if anybody's had a baby? And how will we... You know, it just went on and on, you know, all this uncertainty. Oh, it's a pathetic... Two, three, four, five. Oh, it's part of your life. You can't imagine it not being there. So for it to, to go, it was very sad. Very sad. I live in Perth now, but I came originally from Broken Hill and I do go back to the town you know, several times a year. I've got some mining interests uh, on the outskirts of town and I heard about what was going on with the newspaper and uh, I heard that some people had called the newspaper that were in a, a state of distress. You know, we're removing what is a, uh, basically a lifelong habit for a lot of people and um, I thought that I should try to do something. I eventually got in touch with the general manager, Gavin, I had a chat to Robert. He was very keen to help. He knew what the paper meant to people. He grew up with the paper himself, and yeah, he had the feeling that, yeah, it's going to affect the people of Broken Hill dramatically not having a paper. Robert had the idea that he could approach some big mining companies and some other business that he had contacts with and get them to support pledge money to the paper in the way that they could advertise in the paper. And I said, well, yeah, I'm willing to try anything. That also depends on... You know. I set about talking to connections that I had in the different mining companies in Australia. I was able to get to the CEO of BHP. It looks like it's a goer. And um, they wear the, the BH in BHP very proudly. 
And so I knew that if I explained to them that I needed help and that the town needed help, I, I knew that they um, would respond. Yeah, just following up on um, what we were uh, talking about. And so they got behind me. Yeah. I got a, a very good response um, all around from these companies to come in and, and give some advertising um, to allow the paper to, uh, to, to go back into print. I reckon it only took about a week and a half and he had some money coming in and we worked out that, yes, that's enough to cover costs with JobKeeper covering the wages. So then we got it going within two weeks. Oh, that, that was a fantastic feeling. I mean, it was a big day on the Friday. We worked right through. I stayed and watched it get printed. It was like the birth of another another child or something like that for the most of the people around here. I think that everyone was very excited and really, really happy occasion just to get one out. The deliverers came in. I think they were in in the afternoon all buzzing around, getting the cars ready, adjusting their slingshots and, yeah, just very excited. Just wanted to get in and wanted that paper printed so we could get it straight out onto the streets. And it was a great paper too, actually, the first one back, and I think we sold heaps. That first paper back was huge, like a 40-pager, and it was a jam full of, like, all this interesting content, and we just thought everyone would just, like, like to read it. Down the track, we did the same for the Wednesday edition, and, yeah, people were very excited that the second one was coming out again. It just felt like there was some normality back in your life, you know, oh, and things weren't as bleak as what we first thought they would be. Doing a second edition, it's kind of exciting. It meant going back to four days a week. So the local garden club is unfortunately folding. So I'm going to speak with Anne Hottenberg, who's the secretary of the garden club. Hi, Anne. Emily Hi, from Emily. the paper, how are you? Yeah, good, thank you. It's good. Doing some watering. Perfect for a garden story. Yes. <laughs> And unfortunately, we haven't been able to get a committee together. Okay. So how are you expecting locals to react to that news that there won't be a competition or a club? I think they will understand that we couldn't have one this year. We've got staff for a six day a week newspaper, but we're only printing, you know, two days a week just. When did you ever enter the garden? Yeah, that does mean we probably need less staff. We have a few that have, have gone already, like a couple have decided they're at the age now where they'll retire anyway. I don't know, maybe even if all of us here reduce a few hours a week or something like that. I mean, that's, that's a big, a big help. Um, so you'll get one of you kind of working and then I'll kind of get my smile on so well. Um, I actually don't think a lot of my friends read the paper. I think getting young people involved in reading the truth is something that needs to be done because as sad as it is, our ageing population is not going to be around forever. Yeah, that's lovely. I might just have a look, make sure you like it. <laughs> we really need to restructure our online situation, make it easy for people, more user-friendly. Probably that one is probably the best one, the lighting. And I also think that by doing that, it will actually help uh, the, the longevity of the, of the printed newspaper. Every Friday we have a Zoom meeting because some of the people that are helping us aren't in Broken Hill. Morning, guys. How are we all doing today? I've um, invited Samantha along from advertising today to sit in. Hello, Sam. Hi. The Zoom meeting is to see where we're at, how our strategies are working. Diana, from your home, mm -hmm. representing the, the owners and the board. I'm in Perth and, and free of COVID and free of lockdown, <laughs> so that's good. Talking about the advertising and uh, the long and short term view on that, um, Sam, how does that look? The initial businesses that we lost at the start of COVID, um, the pubs, clubs, um, all that sort of thing, they're all back on board again. Really the next part of this journey is to get that business to operate on its own once JobKeeper finishes. Once the board is opened, I took the opportunity to go back to Broken Hill and, um, and meet this magnificent team that I've been working with. We as a team 
It's, it's funny, isn't it? Because I've only met Gavin for the first time today. But as a team, um, this is what we achieved. The business itself most probably needs to come into the modern era and it may need new ownership and new ideas and a new injection of capital to actually make it survive in the long term. Approach the different mining companies and the other people. I have had discussions with a consortium that has shown interest. They have um, uh, indicated that um, yeah, they'd like to, to stay um, uh, anonymous and, uh, and I respect that. So Robert came to Broken Hill and put together an offer to take over, I guess, management and then ownership of the paper. I don't agree with the website. We're yeah. bleeding at the moment because some people are sharing their subscriptions. Yeah. The plan was to set up an incorporated business that could support the paper, bring in some new capital to uh, uh, help uh, restructure the running of the paper. We gave uh, very serious consideration to what Robert was saying. We're thinking about um, ways that we can diversify the business. So that financial injection would have been really welcome for the newspaper, but one of the sticking points for me was certainly that it would put it into private hands and we just didn't have as much transparency around the ownership long term and the control of the newspaper. I think they're being very cautious at the moment. Yes, the fact that the board didn't really know who was going to be involved, I do get that, but, well, it wasn't so much of a concern for me or the staff. Um, we knew Robert was going to be controlling it, the, the group, the company, whatever it was. It wasn't an easy decision to say, look, at this point, uh, we want to retain ownership of the paper. Local people want to see more local stories, local content. I've got to respect the decision and uh, all I can say is that if the people that work there uh, need my help, um, I'll always be there to help them. After we had decided that we would retain ownership, we thought it was appropriate to meet with staff so that they could be let in on our thinking. I can't make promises that things aren't going to change financially, but just please be reassured, we are financially viable, your entitlements are safe, and we're working to ensure that we can get back somewhere to where we were at the beginning of the year. I think there's a degree of anxiety amongst the staff, and that was evident in the meeting. When it comes to around March, February, when JobKeeper ends, I'm guessing a lot of places, a lot of businesses in town will also have that ending for them. So I would expect there would be a drop locally and advertising would be pulled. We're quite optimistic about um, Broken Hill's future and the region's future, albeit that we accept that things are still uncertain and it is a really challenging time. They wanted to see the business plan and to really understand that. That's still being developed, but what we've tried to do now is start to really engage with staff. There's now to be some huge changes huge and it costs money and I just, you know, I'd like that optimism to be shared, please. Well, I think that we haven't solved the problem. A good positive business plan is what I thought was required, um, you know, uh, restructure that business and get it to work, um, um, you know, in the modern era. <laughs> I believe the COVID and the pandemic is the toughest time this paper has ever had. I often think about it and think I'm the unluckiest person that worked at the Barry Daily Truth for a time. I don't think Broken Hill likes change with a lot of things, especially the paper. We'll have to make some change to survive. The paper has survived a long time in the hands of the BIC and I don't see any reason why it can't continue to survive into the future. If it's run properly and new ideas are brought in, then um, it, it has a chance of surviving. It was always believed that Broken Hill would never last very long. 20 years here, 20 years there, and it would be gone. But we haven't finished up yet, we're still going, so... And we hope that the, the Barry Daily Truth will keep going with us. Mm -hmm.